Special thanks to our promotional partners at the American Philatelic Society. The APS is the largest stamp collecting organization in the world, supporting collectors of any level worldwide. For more information about membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. I'm Charles Epting from H.R. Harmer in New York City. And I'm Michael Cortese of Noble Sperry in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And this is Conversations with Philatelists. Michael, this is a really exciting one. This is one we've been looking forward to. Um, Maybe you more so than me because you are from New Hampshire. Yeah. Why don't you tell people who we're going to uh, see today? So today we're on our way to see John H. Sununu and John E. Sununu, former governor and White House chief of staff to George H.W. Bush. For John H. Sununu. For John H. Sununu. And John E. Sununu is the former senator of New Hampshire. And John E.'s brother, John H.'s son, other yes. son, is Chris Sununu, current Sununu. governor of New Hampshire. Current so this governor is, of New Hampshire. This is an incredible political dynasty yeah. in New Hampshire. Yes. These are like New Hampshire royalty, you yeah. could say. Yes. And uh, we found out they're stamp collectors. Yes. And you emailed them a while ago. They were kind enough to invite us over. Yeah. And I, I drove up from, uh, from New York just for this one. Yeah. Because we have been so excited to meet with the Sununus. We don't know a ton about what it is they collect. Right. Um, I kind of like going into it that way because yeah. they, they're going to get to walk us through everything. Um, so we're on the road. We just grabbed some breakfast. We've got Claire filming in the back seat of the car. And uh, we're going to go talk to John and John Sununu. I'm really looking forward to this I'm one. I'm so excited for this yeah. one. Let's, um, let's, go, let's get there. Yeah. So we are here with John H. and John E. Sununu, um, former governor. Uh, and uh, governor of New Hampshire and chief of staff for President Bush and former senator of New Hampshire. Did I get all that correct? Good enough. And, and I'm the older one. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, you two have, have very generously invited uh, Michael and I into your home to show off your stamp collection, which you gave us a little bit of a, a briefing about when we just got here. Um, and and I, I, I am really amazed by the family connections to this. That, that's really the thing that's jumping at me. A lot of people collect stamps that they think are pretty or maybe, you know, it's just what they started with as a kid. But you guys, I feel like every one of the collections that we'll go through in this room has some sort of family tie or some sort of personal tie. So this is a third generation collection. We've got two of the generations here. Can you talk a bit about who started this collection and uh, uh, sort of the, 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 the roots of it? Um, yeah, it, it is a third generation collection uh, started by my father. Uh, he was born in Boston, uh, but spent most of his early adult life in Europe and the Middle East. Uh, he was very active in international business, uh, import, export, marketing. And, um, and at a very early age, he picked up the habit of uh, liking to collect stamps. And so um, uh, he was the initial collector. I got very interested in it, uh, probably by his urgings, when I was about nine and uh, and uh, took up uh, the hobby. Uh, it isn't something that we are intense about, but... but uh, we... After looking at this room, I might beg to differ <laughs> a little bit, but... <laughs> but uh, uh, we've, we've worked at it over the years, and, uh, and John has picked up the mantle, so to speak. And, and what we have is, is a collection of uh, stamps, covers, uh, postal memorabilia that, that reflects little pieces of, of the family involvement. As my dad uh, uh, had a formal set to his collection. These are his uh, uh, hand-drawn pages uh, and, and the stamps he put in. Uh, he focused, uh, as I said earlier, on the Middle East. Uh, so these are places he would have lived and he would have done business with. Or, or he... visited or, right. or, or had clients in. Um, some of the stamps came on, on letters to him, and we'll, we'll see a bunch of that in a while. Uh, and a lot of it, um, uh, he would, uh, if he visited the place, probably run into the post office and pick up a bunch of stamps. So, so this is the formal set. Uh, there's an informal box of accumulations, yeah, which, why you grab which are right models. here, um, <laughs> which, which John and I uh, uh, picked up when my father shut his office on Broadway in New York uh, in the 70s. We went down uh, when he retired to help him move out. And John, you tell the story better than I do. Well, <laughs> we were in the office, you know, putting furniture into a moving van and getting ready to move a desk. And he said, grab a shopping bag. So I said, oh, here's a shopping bag, Grandpa. And he opened a filing cabinet drawer and it was filled to the very top 
with stamps, just each, you know, torn off the corner of an envelope, <laughs> thrown in the drawer. So every day's day. mail, he just would have... Every, every day's <laughs> mail, every letter, every day. And I say that because he opened another drawer and we filled another couple of shopping bags and another. And we probably walked out with 10 or 15 shopping bags, just like these, maybe even these very ones, uh, filled with stamps. And it, I mean, it just was obvious he was in that office I think starting around 1940, I think his brother was probably there at first, in, in 39 or 40, he was there starting in 40 or 41. And, you know, he had kept every stamp off of every envelope for about 40 years. And uh, at so, that point, where would he have been doing business with? What were you know, most of the uh, exactly, Truly every country in the world. So, I mean, that obviously got me excited about the idea of collecting and, and then... Uh, you know, I saw these uh, formal pages as well in Albania and Syria and Egypt and Iraq and got me excited about the geography of the U.S. stamp collecting. So I, I, to get to the sort of semi, the middle of the chase, not the end, I think when we went through all of those stamps that we took from the office and sorted them by country, um, there were probably a uh, hundred countries. And, and these are all off just his you know, personal uh, correspondence. What's left here, this, so, I mean, this is a fraction of a fraction, right? <laughs> These are almost all Spanish things. So Spain probably did the most business with a, a few key distributors in Spain. And so we had, not hundreds, but literally thousands and thousands of stamps from Spain. And I think that's mostly what's left in these original bags. And, and is that when you kind of got involved with the collection as well, or did he bring you in before that? Or? No, that was, you know, that became a somewhat, somewhat intense family activity through the late 70s and early 80s. We had a downstairs bathroom. Just soaking the stamps. The sink was, you know, I believe, I'm sure our technique wasn't, wasn't pristine, or, you know, uh, uh, national, uh, uh, nationally approved, but yeah, we would soak stamps in this one downstairs bathroom, you know, dry them out, flatten them out, and and put them in albums. And I think I think this Spanish album here, these pages, you know, they're just classic Scott pages, old kind of old time. Um, th this one here on the the right is pr are probably from that you know first family collection, where you know we're just taking what my grandfather had, mounting them. Um, and, and having a good time. I mean, it's just, you know, stamp collecting for fun. Nothing more, nothing less, but it was terrific. That's great. So so this will have been the remaining album from the 70s from when you first started. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's really a family history. You have the hand-drawn pages from 1938. I saw mm -hmm. most of them. Yeah. Then you've got this collection from the 70s. And it's amazing how you... It, it, Really evolved, and, yeah. and you can sort of all these slices of Sununu family life yeah, um, as told through the different collections. And then we started spending some money to to uh, go after some of the very early Spanish stuff, and and, and that's what we have here. And I and I'm I know I've pulled even some of the better stamps that my grandfather had, you know, saving by seeing. Uh, or even ones that we came across that we didn't really want to mount in the in the Scots, and as we got, I got better and better in terms of curation, we've added some of those. So this is probably the, the most complete of the Spanish albums we have. Now that's an interesting album. That that album is all full of stamps from the the, the time when the Spanish Revolution and right after World War II. Which it's incredible how many local, I mean, every municipality basically was making yes. their own. Yeah. Well, it, uh, during the Civil War, right. it was every every municipality for themselves, in effect. And this is a very complete uh, collection. It runs from I think thirty six to thirty nine or forty in Spain, um, and has has most of the Republican uh, issues. So as he traveled to different places, did he send you letters from where he was going to put into the collection? No, no, no. He um, he stopped traveling, um, not not stopped traveling, but he it, traveling used to be ninety percent of his life mm -hmm. up till about nineteen fifty, mm -hmm. and then he um, had his office in New York, still going, and, and 
Um, basically, he would travel sporadically at that right. point. Now, he, uh, my, my involvement in collecting stamps was parallel to his at that time. Mm-hmm. He was collecting them and putting them in the drawer. <laughs> and I was going to Gimbel's and Macy's and buying stamps to, to fill in. I, at that time, had a, a real focus on the, I think it's 1937 presidential series. And uh, I would take whatever money I had and go down to Macy's and buy some uh, mm-hmm. mint uh, presidentials. And one of the fun mm-hmm. things uh, for me was uh, coming across a, a full set of the Queen Elizabeth's coronation. And uh, they the original set I found was stored in, in a glycine envelope, but it, it had the, the receipt from Gimbel. So you'd go down to Gimbel's. You'd pay, well, let's just see what he paid, $8.60. Not a bad investment. is <laughs> what it looks like. Yeah, $8.60 uh, was the, uh, uh, 25 cents of that was tax. So it was eight forty five and 25 cents tax. And uh, they gave him a receipt, uh, which was mailed. I love the, the, his address. You would have gotten this yeah. in the mail, letting yeah. you know when your stamps would be ready for pickup. That's right. Four, yeah. four cents to, to mail it to him on Broadway. And it told him when he could go and, and pick up the set. And then later on, uh, he got a, a more complete set and a you know nice presentation uh, booklet. So you know, as a, as a kid, I remember seeing this book and and just thinking it was the coolest thing because the stamps were beautiful and pristine and never used and and had great images and photography. And we we UK is one of the the areas of focus we have. We've got a pretty good UK uh, collection, and, and so it's nice to have the coronation set. Mm. One other, just while we're at this table, this is uh, like a full sheet of uh, Guatemalan airmail stamps, or a couple of remnants of a full sheet. But uh, you, you see, the uh, airplane is overstamped. And uh, you know, when I first came across, it, and this is from his original collection because these are the pages he used. I thought this must be worth a million dollars, you know, <laughs> and it has some value. It, you know, it might be a hundred dollars or a couple of hundred dollars. But I just remember finding this and thinking it must be pure gold. But uh, it probably is worth its weight in gold, right? It's about uh, one hundred and twenty-seven dollars or something like that. Uh, but they're beautiful. I mean, the yeah. the artwork and it has a, a lot of Central American stamps because. Um, that's where my grandmother was raised, and she had a lot of family there. So, um, again, you know, Guatemala, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Cuba, uh, Cuba just very, again, com- complete, a lot of breadth from those areas. And, and I think some of the artwork on uh, the Guatemalan stamps in particular are, uh, are beautiful. So, if you guys don't mind moving over to this table, I love this is sort of the next uh, chapter of, um, yeah. of, of life for you guys. Because you had an opportunity that um, very few people have, in that you had a direct line of communication uh, to the president, <laughs> yeah, you might say. I was chief of staff uh, to old President Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, for three and a half years. And, um, and he was a wonderful guy. Who was very tolerant of my collection? Did he have any interest in the hobby himself? Did he ever? Was he a childhood collector that you know of? Or? He was not a childhood collector of stamps, but uh, uh, he was interested in some collections like baseball cards and memorabilia. So he understood the, uh, uh, the he bug un- that we. He all understood have. my disease, <laughs> <laughs> and and he uh, really was very generous. Um, he would sign just about anything I asked him to sign, as long as I didn't bring too many in at once. And so I have a great collection of, uh, of um, uh, first, first aid first covers, covers yeah. signed by Bush. This is the Supreme Court Bicentennial. This is the 20th anniversary of the moon landing. It's signed both by Bush and Dan Coyle, who was vice president. So these are all stamps that were issued during the, uh, during the Bush administration. Yeah, that's right. This is a Greenwich, Connecticut founder's station. And somebody sent it, me a couple of them, and I got the president to sign one for me. And so it's a post-it note from the desk of George Bush. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, um, the Creatures of the Sea commemorative stamp. Uh, th- this is an interesting issue because it was a joint issue with the Soviet Union, and you can see that it is postmarked... Um, by the Soviet Union here, Moscow, USSR. 
And, and, and joint issues are not all that uncommon, but mm-hmm. this joint issue in 1990 really had much larger political implications, I would say. It was the first joint issue, and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, go with the president uh, on all our foreign trips. In particular, we went to Malta, um, had a five-on-five meeting, the summit at Malta. Uh, There's Mr. Gorbachev, the president, Jimmy Baker, myself. And uh, I had asked the president uh, if I could ask uh, uh, Gorbachev to sign a couple of things at the end of the meeting if, if there was an appropriate moment. And at the end of the meeting, the president George turned to Gorbachev and said, Governor Sununu has a question for you. And I uh, took out a couple of these and asked them to sign them. So here is the uh, uh, Creatures of the Sea signed by George Bush and Mikhail Gorbachev. (laughs) That's absolutely incredible. Now, I got to develop a pretty good relationship with Gorbachev. And so after we went to any meeting, um, he would ask the president uh, at the end, did Mr. Sununu, did Governor Sununu bring anything else for me to sign? And so uh, this was actually the first one he signed. Um, the space issue was the first one. Uh, these he signed in 1990. These were signed in 1989 at the, uh, at the Malta event. So we have a lot of stuff signed by President Gorbachev, including this uh, water file Russian issue of waterfowl, and I've got a bunch of pictures out outside there that he signed. So I I took full advantage of uh, being in the right place at the right time. Well, and and uh, you told me these are signed by Helmut Kohl. This is George Bush and Helmut Kohl. Uh, we have a Barbara Bush one here, right, right there in your hand. Oh, this is signed by Barbara Bush. There was a um, a, a reading literacy stamp issued and. You know, she was strong on the Absolutely. literacy, so Barbara signed that one for us. And, and uh, for a lot of Americans, even more important uh, than a world leader, arguably, is Stan Musial. Musial. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got a joint signature of George Bush and Stan Musial when... when uh, Did uh, you meet Stan the man himself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the nice things about the White House is you do get to meet folks. I like got yes. to meet Ted Williams. There's a... A great picture of Ted Williams on the wall in the White House. I've always enjoyed the Franks. And then now maybe that's yeah. because, unlike my father, I enjoyed the Frank privilege. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and these are both done by uh, uh, President Bush when he was vice president. Mm-hmm. Wow. Again, the stamp collection is incredible, but just the historical... Uh, the connection. Or, exactly. Yeah. Fact, this, you know, this stuff was all in the White House. Yeah. Uh, it's just absolutely unbelievable. Um, we've gone out and spent some serious money occasionally. Um, uh, that's uh, Major. That's uh, Bermuda. Oh, John Major. Major. Yeah, yeah this was Bermuda John Major summer. from Bermuda. He signed it with President Bush. A couple of errors. This is a couple of copies of the Pickett error and the Pickett non-error. And then we have a strip here of the Nixon error. Which is, you can see the... Regular stamp has yeah. his right. and name they, at the top, and the, the error block is yeah. um, completely lacking. That's a great looking piece. Mm-hmm. And these are some that we've acquired over the years. Uh, some Confederate states. This is a this is one of my favorite collections. The the, uh, the U.S. China, offices yeah. abroad in China, and uh, this is the Canal and Zone in issue in Hawaii. Yeah. And, and, oh, yeah, and the Hawaii. Mm. I mean, for me, I always uh, was interested in these uh, U.S. issues uh, abroad, for China, Canal Zone, and Hawaii at the time, which was uh, not a state, just because it was that geography, right? The geography of collecting, you learn about the world, you learn about places, and, and obviously you learn about history. But Hawaii, that, while that wasn't part of the United States, and you learn a little bit more about it, uh, about its history, about its you know movement to statehood and, and all the rest. So you know, as a kid, there was always that hook to learn a little bit more about the places uh, you were finding these stamp, stamps from. Yeah. Here's a couple of more personal things. Um, when I became governor, uh, I encouraged our wildlife uh, group to uh, consider issuing a governor's edition of the uh, duck stamps, and so New Hampshire became the first state to issue what's called the governor's edition, primarily for fundraising for 
wildlife preservation. And, uh, and so we were the first state to do it. Uh, and I uh, signed a bunch of them. And, and here is, I think, the very first one and some of the others that we have put here. Now every state has a governor's edition of dub stamps. And uh, it's become a great national uh, fundraising effort for wildlife funds across the country. So uh, I'm pretty proud of having started that. And, and quite a popular sect of the of the state duck collecting. Yeah, duck stamp collectors are sort of their own. Uh, yeah, all their own animals. Yeah. They take it very seriously. And yeah, yeah the governor's editions are again. Yeah. I I did not realize that originated yeah. here in New Hampshire. Just now because it's, I was a stamp collector and figured. People would pay for something as unique as that. And, and with the money going to a good cause. Going yeah. to a great cause. You created your own uh, type of collecting. <laughs> your yes. own collector. We created our own niche. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is your U.S. collection. This is our U.S. Mint collection, mostly mint. And uh, we've got the nice chunk of the air postal stamps here. We have... Uh, a mint Colombian and a mint Mississippi set in here. One, two, five. Zeppelins. Yeah. There, there it is. There's the mint Colombian. The uh, it, you know this is all, all about the the peril, the great peril of collecting, which is the need to upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, over time, I think we had accumulated you know pretty full U.S. collection, you know, mostly used mm -hmm. and. Or, or um, canceled in some form, and uh, but then you know over time you you want to upgrade a little bit, upgrade a little bit more, and so uh, yeah, we uh, you know, bought different groups of stamps and tried to consolidate them all here and, and a couple of nice albums. And as much fun as the geographical diversity is, the Central America, the Middle East. Do you guys find yourself drawn to American stamps? Do you find this to be a uh, you know, it's, it's such an integral part of our country's history yeah. that you, you have to have the U.S. collection oh, in yeah. addition to everything this else. This is the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. And I would say the second uh, second tier to that is the U.K. and the uh, British Mandate Palestine. And then uh, almost equal to that is the Central American and Spanish collection. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. I mean, the, the, uh, the stamps from Palestine, um, because it was a place my grandfather's doing a lot of correspondence, again, very com relatively complete uh, sets of uh, stamps, you know, from say the mid twenties to the to the late forties. Um, but then over time, is sort of a desire to expand that and complete it. Um, there are a number of countries like uh, Jordan and Egypt that carried, uh, you know, overprints. Palestinian overprints, which I always I always found all the overprints interesting, whether they were you know canal zone or or anywhere else, you know, the idea that it's a stamp used uh, for one purpose and, and this place or at this time and then then later overprinted. So, um, yeah, the, the Palestinian mandate collection has, has been fun to expand and, and add to. What do we? Yeah. Well, I was just going to yeah. ask where where would you buy your stamp? Would you buy from auctions? Would you go to shows? Noble Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get a better advertising yeah. <laughs> than that. A little bit it shows, but but you know eBay. in the modern age, yeah. eBay, yeah, you know, and especially, I mean, I've found it the case for for most collectibles, if you've handled a lot of material mm -hmm. and you know what you're looking for, and and you know, obviously, if you have confidence that it's a, a good dealer, you know, you can um, you can get good prices, you can find what you're looking for, and and mm -hmm. even if it's very rare, you know, if you're yeah. patient. Things will be and be listed. There's a couple of dealers that have good websites. And yeah. Some auctions, some direct sale. Yeah. We haven't done that much on stamps in the most recent years. I, I stopped buying probably five or six years ago. Yeah, I think that's probably right. And yeah. uh, and then it took me five or six years to figure out what he had bought and find, <laughs> and find a home for it. Yeah, you've yeah. got enough yeah. stuff here to yeah. keep you busy yeah. for a while, even yeah. without acquisitions. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, we were talking about. The connection with my father. We've got some great envelopes over here. So these are some of my favorite uh, covers. So um, these are letters written to my grandmother. Really? Uh, yeah, uh, while he was in um, uh, in the Middle East. So uh, there was a pretty serious correspondence. Oh. He would actually keep track 
of how many letters he wrote each week uh-huh. uh, and how many he received each week. So <laughs> all of these, these, that's, um, you know, that's his P.O. Box mm-hmm. 163. That's his, uh, his initials. And so these are all uh, obviously family covers, which have been, you know, just, uh, again, it, it's yeah. more of a personal value than anything right. else. Right. But still, I mean... And these boxes are full of covers. I, I took a handful out earlier. You know, They're addressed to some, some some business, uh, some that we've accumulated through the years that you know might have come in a, in a collection we picked up. But the most of these are, are all family here, and um, these are interesting. I taught at Tufts, yeah. And when foreign students would ask for information, the secretary would keep the envelopes for me. Really. And they were written to different faculty. Oh, these members. are from all over the place. Yeah. So you had a direct in at Tufts to yeah, all I the thought, mail from. I there for 16 years. <laughs> uh, so again, you know, just family, obviously, in this kind of condition doesn't have a lot of uh, economic value. But this is from El Salvador. So this would be from uh, one of my grandmother's uh, brothers, probably, who was who were still living in El Salvador. This is interesting. It went through... Um, yeah. Um, what do you call it? Um, uh, the censor. The censor. Oh, so censor. this is uh, the, it's dated in 1944, and this was to my uh, to my grandfather uh, at their address in New York City at the time, uh, which was uh, Dartmouth Street in uh, in Queens, New York. But it had to since it came yeah. from what they considered a country that needed to be checked. It had to yeah. go through the censor. So again, all of these would be family, uh, you know, uh, covers. Um, to, uh, to that Dartmouth Street address. Let's see what else we have. Ah, so these are the, the two brothers, uh, my grandfather John and his brother Edward, who had their business at that 150 Broadway address. And this also came from, uh, from uh, Jerusalem. Uh, in fact, this was from their father. So that S is for Saleh, that was their father. So that goes back four generations. Well, yes, yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is one from their sister. Again, the same time frame. Uh, and uh, in, in this case, it's probably during the war. So there's a notice that note that it's in English, mm-hmm. uh, which is obviously for the censors in, in the case that it makes a difference to them. My grandfather was the first, my father's father, my grandfather was the first uh, of the family to go very serious into the international business. And, and he would... Uh, for example, would go to Russia, like in 1902 or three, pick up artifacts there, and then bring them back to Europe and the Middle East and sell them. And uh, he he had a great style of doing it. Any country he went to, he would learn the language before he went. And so the family legend is that he spoke 17 languages. <laughs> uh, this is uh, end of war time, but obviously the censors are still at work. But this is from Iran. So and I, and these I thought these always had great imagery of them of the young Shah. Yeah, uh, and he's got the red label on the front. I saw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that would be you know business related import export. They're obviously doing work with somebody in in Iran at the time. And and next to you is the uh, the bulk of the the British Mandate in Palestine collection. So can you talk a little bit about the history of this where where this would have been. Well, he started. Um, my grandfather was uh, came to the U.S. in in 1903. Um, he, they, they came from Jerusalem. They were part of the Greek Orthodox community in Jerusalem. They went back during World War, just before World War One, and and ended up getting stuck over there and, and stayed over there. And so uh, my dad spent a lot of his early youth um, in that part of the world and and started. Co- you know, expanding his collection, and, and most of these stamps are, uh, well, stamps that he saved, and we have filled in a great deal, particularly the, the mint stamps we, we, we put in, although he had some mint stamps, and this is a fairly complete set of the uh, British Mandate Palestinian stamps, including uh, some of the, uh, these are the Egyptian overprints. So I always, you know, we we're talking about the overprints. That's uh, those are the overprints done uh, on the Egyptian stamps, and then these were Jordanian stamps as well, all carrying the 
uh, an imprint uh, overprint either in red or in green um, indicating that they're for use in the Palestinian mandate. This is, this is also interesting. I believe these uh, these Egyptian stamps carry the overprint, but the they had struck out the king the when he passed away. They uh, struck out the, uh, the king's image. Fantastic. Again, the family connection. Is, yeah. you know, it's not like somebody picked Palestine randomly. Yeah. No. Right. It's the fact that you had people there yeah. living this firsthand that's um, that's so incredible to me. And these are some New Hampshire related covers. Yeah. Is that and those are stampless? Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a mix. So there there are stampless ones. Uh, these all have a connection. Uh, those are more interesting cancellations and, and usage. Uh, these all have a connection to New Hampshire, either postmark or address. Um, and, and some, you know, some fairly early covers there, uh, Laconia and Claremont's in there, Charleston, um, a lot of Concord and Exeter. Yeah. These are the Patriotics. These, yeah, Patriotics. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Concord Volunteers, I think? Yeah. 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 Portsmouth Stampless. Those are among the items that mysteriously showed up uh, not long after my father discovered eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, they, they, those are those are all samples. Yeah. And then we still got one more. Part of the room to look at. There's one more pile. It sounds like this was more your doing. This part of the collection, or how does this fit into the into the puzzle of everything? Well, a little obviously both, um, because in two examples, United Kingdom and Lebanon, we had, I would say, very extensive uh, collections, and even Cuba. And then over time, uh, my father made a couple of purchases of some some stronger albums. And so these are just good examples where uh, I would have the time to go back and to try to consolidate and uh, you know identify the best items of our collection and put them all together in a way that uh, at least in some way we can enjoy and, and take a look at. It's, it's so much easier to enjoy, you know, when you have a say a nice stock book that you can flip through then if you're in a brown demoulis shopping bag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it sounds like you're pretty complete on Lebanon and yeah, yeah. These, these are areas and you've been able to Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the, the the Lebanese collection is is really complete from the you know, the earliest stamps are are French, uh, with a with a, a Syrian or a Lebanese uh, overprint. Uh, from the late 20s uh, is typical. And the collection is fairly complete through about, about 1960. And, uh, and largely uh, un, un, unused, uh, but you know some of the olders have cancellations. And then the, this is our uh, collection from Great Britain. Uh, we do have the 1840s and the 1841s. I was gonna say, you start with the, the first four, that's yeah. where it all began yeah. worldwide. Yeah, I was kind of proud when I ended up getting those. So can I ask a general question? Yeah. You showed us a bit of your baseball cards, just looking around the books, the memorabilia, the signed photos. Why is collecting so important for you guys? Mm -hmm. I know it's a, you know, a lot of people just chalk it up to genetics. You make a joke about the disease or the bug or whatnot. But is there is there a reason? That, I mean, even just seeing the the campaign memorabilia yeah. inside of the, uh, the 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 coffee yeah. table, what what is it about uh, you know having this stuff around you that's so important? Because I, Michael and I are, are cut from the same cloth, and I think a lot of people who will be listening to this are. But but for you guys personally, what is what is this all about? Well, you've actually talked about it uh, a little earlier. Um, it's the connection to family for us. Um, I collected baseball cards when I was growing up playing baseball. And uh, I grew up in New York City at a time when we had the New York Yankees, the Brooklyn Dodgers, and the New York Giants. And and, uh, and you identified your friends in that way. He's a Giant fan, he's a Dodger fan, he's a Yankee fan. And you were a Yankee fan. And I was a Yankee fan at the time. And uh, 
And and so it's that connection that I think started my interest in the baseball cards. Certainly the connection with my dad on on uh, the stamps, and uh, and that just uh, blossomed out into other areas. As you see, I collect a lot of signed uh, photographs, but just about every photograph there has some connection. The one that you see is a cartoon there on the left. Uh -huh. That's the original artwork for the uh, Topps George Herbert Walker Bush baseball card, <laughs> of which there were only 100 made. Uh, so, you know, I, I collect mostly things that I are connected to me or things that someone has given me from someone that I care about. Yeah, I, I think that's it's that that piece of history, right? So if, if you're collecting baseball cards, for me the interest is it's a piece of your personal history. I mean, it does take you back to childhood, but that's what, what personal history is about. Um, for the stamps, uh, you know, I mentioned the, the geographical connection uh, that, that sort of sustain my interest, but there's no question some of the you know earliest memories and earliest interest was, was generated by that, the family connection and the, the personal history. And it's, it's like, you know, you're collect, collecting um, the recovery issue, that there's a, a piece of personal and, and, and family history there that interests you and excites you, and, and it grows into something just a little bit bigger. Well, we touched upon the baseball cards a little bit, but if you don't mind, I would love to take a look at that because I, I thought that was just a tremendous presentation. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> In the late 70s, we found my father's uh, original baseball cards uh, card collection mm -hmm. in the basement of their home in, in Queens. And my mother didn't throw my cards away. <laughs> no, no, she did not. She did not. So we, we brought those back to New Hampshire. And they were uh, mostly Bowman and Tops from 1948 to the early 50s. Mm -hmm. The 48s and 49 sets were, and 50s, were almost entirely complete. They got a little bit more sporadic from there. Yeah. And I started going to baseball card shows to, to fill out the were four cards missing from the 1950s set, about 25 cards missing from the 49 Bowman set, and slowly you know, fill those out. And then one thing led to another. Um, I remember going with my father to buy a, a full set of 56 tops yeah. um, uh, after I graduated from, uh, from high school. And so today the collection goes from 1948 to 1957. Uh, most of the uh, issues from Bowman and, and from Tops, and so uh, not all the cards are graded, but these are these are the graded ones. So they start with 51 tops. Uh, go to can retrospectively say it's 52 tops. You know, which is a, a great issue. Uh, Ted Kozuski, Hall of Famer, and uh, so this side is 51, two, three, four, five, and I think we go up to about 1957. Ted Williams, of course. Right, card number one. One of, one of the greats of all time. Yeah, card. yeah. and then I mean the '57 tops too. Um, the photography is is beautiful, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and 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 the cards are another case where you're not just collecting haphazard. There have been right. so many cards, especially in the last twenty to thirty years, yeah. where the market really sure. boomed. And, sure. and you you guys are focusing on what you knew growing yeah, up. These right. are the the heroes that you grew yeah. up watching. We, although I must tell you that he has become an addict. Collecting the Judge, the old Judge. Oh, old Judge cards. Yeah. Sure. So, so this was all. Uh, you know, that original collection was forty-eight to, to fifty-seven, and it's, it still is. And we had this four just for the cards. I was going to yeah, ask you it's, it's, it's the perfect display. I mean, I mean, that was my <laughs> idea. I, I, uh, <laughs> I could use work with a, uh, yeah. a, a furniture maker named Paxton uh, uh, from uh, Chester, New Hampshire. A lot of this yeah. furniture is made yeah. by yeah. one great guys who belong yeah. to a group called the New Hampshire Furniture Masters. Jackass, yes. They die. They uh, stand up this. Yeah, so the, the core of you know uh, his collection ended up being uh, 48 to 57. In the last 10 years, I got into collecting pre war cards. So I, co I collect from 80, 1887 to 1919 uh, tobacco and, and candy cards. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I had a couple of 1933 Gowdy. Yeah, so to say, if I had to go after one, that's my yeah, so uh, holy grail. Uh, you, you can't collect everything. So right. Very early. <laughs> you cannot collect everything. And um, the 
Uh, I have Gaudi premiums, 1939 Gaudi premiums. Uh, there are several sets. Uh, and I had a set of Diamond Stars for a while, which are a great Art Deco looking set from 1934, 35, and 36, but sold those. Now you just focus but, on free. But the, the 33 Gaudi set, which is you know one of the three or four linchpin sets of collecting, but never, uh, we've never collected those. Yeah. We have something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> More drawers to the top. And these, uh, since you're here. So, the, the card that was designed for President Bush, if you, if you were to read all of the notations around it, that was passed around the senior staff at Tops for their comment. So there were comments about the color, there were comments about uh, the background, the statistics on the back. But one of the notations says, we should try to get a picture of him at Yale. Okay, so that's why, that's a, it's a portrait, mm -hmm. but that's not what they used for the picture. The ultimate picture was the photograph of him at Yale. Oh, and, great uh, card. And so that's the card that Topps ended up uh, putting together. Uh, the Art Shoren, who was the president of Topps at the time, came to the White House uh, with, a, with a, a hundred of these and presented them to the president. And um, and the president, you know, distributed them to staff and, and, and to the president and the staff board. and 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 family members and such. And and um, so the, these are the uh, a handful of cards that he he gave to the. Now there's the a very interesting story about the originals and some that leaked out of tops. And if you click online, tops and Bush and baseball cards and. You can even find an article written by the uh, fellow PSA. who uh, was the CEO and president of uh, PSA, card authenticators. And after a long back and forth with them, we finally explained to them that there were only 100 of these made. And the 100 or so that had been graded mm. uh, were all almost certainly, you know, man illicitly manufactured and you know, shipped out a loading right. dock somewhere. So uh, th there's a very distinct they manufacturing were difference. They mine were not yeah, yeah. They, they, they said, oh, yeah, that would be, we, we questioned the uh, authentic, uh, uh, authenticity of these cards. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure yeah. we know where we got them. So, um, and, and it turns out there's a very specific uh, manufacturing technique used for these and, and the way there's a, a gloss at the, uh, laid on the front, really? which is very distinct and and the cards that they had been exactly. grading, yeah, um, the cards that they had been grading were all without this, and you know, some marketing guy probably printed a couple of sheets mm -hmm. and took them home and was slowly selling them, uh, <laughs> hoping that no one. And they sold even those the knockoffs, so to speak. They sell for a lot of money. Yeah. Really, yeah. Well, very, very, very history. To them. Very few of these have uh, yeah. the actual I issue have have been sold. One of the coolest yeah. things I've ever seen. It, it's it's a. I mean, you know, it's a, just a beautiful original Tom Yeah. So, uh, you know, with the logo. And the I have one of them over there that the president signed for me. Really? Oh, here's a, so it's, it's funny, though, when we were sort of trying to just uh, authenticate these so that PSA would, you know, encapsulate and protect them. Maybe this is more for protection than yeah, anything. Right. Of course. You know, we're, we're, you know, trying to explain, no, the, this, this surface gloss, this is the way they all are. Mm -hmm. And so we reached out to President Bush, who was up in Kennebunk at the time, and and just, you know, to get his assistance memory of the process and that. And she said, well, here, I'll send you another one from the binder. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she had sent us another, uh, yet, yet another one, just so that we could compare it to all the others. But I mean, that's the, the way you know, he always thought is, you know, just whatever you need to, to help you out, he's willing this to do it. This is one of the great iconic baseball pictures in history. When Babe Ruth, just before he died, wrote his memoirs, and he presented his memoirs to Yale University, and they were given to the captain of the Yale baseball team at the time, which was George Herbert Walker Bush. So there is a picture of Babe Ruth and the future president of the United States. Wow. Ruth died about four months later. This is the baseball card we were talking about, signed by the president, and that's just a, a run-of-the-mill 
Babe Ruth picture that I put together. It's incredible. When I was governor, I uh, had a couple of first state covers made and signed them. These are for you. Are you sure? Yeah, really. And Warren Berger, who was chief justice, came up uh, for the uh, issue, the centennial, New Hampshire centennial, and he signed those as I. So that's for you. Thank you so and much. And then uh, Barbara Bush's literacy card. That's for you. Wow. And the Creatures of the Sea, signed by George Herbert Walker Bush. Are you kidding? Wow. No. No. <laughs> this, that, that's incredible. I can't thank you enough. Yeah. Enjoy. So no, these, are, these are automatically so at the top of my collection. This is, uh, I'm speechless. Well, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, thank Thanks for so coming up. No, thank Good you. to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank this you. was a real pleasure. No, yeah, no. I'm looking forward to this for a Hope long. it works out. Yeah. Michael, we're here at the Tuckaway Tavern yes. in Raymond, New Hampshire, after a very successful morning with uh, John E. and John H. Sununu. Yeah. Um, I've been really looking forward to this one. When you reached out to them, I think it was just asking for a Zoom interview? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I emailed John H. Sununu and I said, can we interview you? With the, I sent him the link to the podcast, a couple of the episodes that we'd done, and he said... Uh, I, I asked if we could do the Zoom interview, and he said, no, you can come to our house. Which is crazy. And also, you're from New Hampshire. Yes. You're not born, but raised in New right, Hampshire. Right. This is your state. This is this political family that is so synonymous with you. I so grew up wine. hearing the name Sununu. Yeah. For them to be like, hey, just come on over, look yeah. at our stamp collection. And then Incredible. once we get there, on the one hand, you've got a really good stamp collection. You've yes. got a $5 Columbian, yeah. Zeppelin's. Legends of the West era, like things yeah. that every the collector would want. Every, exactly. So obviously they've they've got their stamp collecting chops. But yeah. then this this personal history going from the 1930s in Palestine yeah. to uh, you know the 1970s in this New York office dumping you know drawers full of <laughs> of killware into these yeah. bags yeah. into the, then all of a sudden you're at the White House in 1990. Yeah. It's all these different eras of Sununu family history yeah. that I really loved taking a tour and through. And they held onto it the entire time. The covers from for Palestine to Mexico with the registration right. labels. And these the things have been moved so many times, sensors. but they just refuse to yes. let go of them, which I love because I relate to that yes. completely. So Well, they do as well. It's the, it, it gives them the personal family collection, connection. I mean, you, you ask what collecting meant to them, and, and they both... It's the family thing. It's the family, yeah. So, Michael, this was a very successful interview. Yeah. One of my favorites we've ever done. Absolutely. What do you say? Cheers. Absolutely.